Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining us for the November, actually rather the December edition of our Crystal Reports Tips and Tricks webinar. We put on these tips and tricks once a month. I just want to let you guys know that we're starting to post these tips and tricks videos to our YouTube channel, which can be found at youtube.com slash user slash the marks group. So we are uploading uh, right now actually just the, the gold mine and the uh, crystal reports tips and tricks. But those are always there for you and they're going to start building up. And hopefully you'll find that as a nice resource. Also you can find any of our previous tips and tricks at blog.marksgroup.net. And today we are looking at a few different things. A, um, as with every crystal presentation that I do, the bullet points of stuff to talk about always seem so thin until we get into it. So we're going to learn how to, how to count some records. Um, it seems so simple, but there's a lot that can go on there. We're also going to look at how to view the selection criteria. We're going to revisit how to calculate age based upon a date. And what I'd actually really like to get into is, uh, <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, advanced counting records because I'd like to show you uh, a couple of techniques that you can use uh, when management wants to generate some crazy subtotals out of the data that they, you've been carefully tracking. So let's jump right in. What I have here is just a very simple report. It's hooked up to a gold mine contact and company table. So within this table I have things like company, contact, state, uh, address information. I also have this create on date. So the idea being uh, that we want to just generate a subtotal of how many records are on this report. Well, Crystal's nice enough to show us down here that there's 11 records, but if we were doing uh, weird things within the report, that number becomes more meaningless as time goes on. We want a nice subtotal right on the report. So how do we count records on the report? Well, the easiest way is to actually insert a summary. And a summary operation is just like a mathematical operation. It's going to be a count, a distinct count, a maximum, a minimum. If it was a numeric field, sum would be available uh, as like just summarization. So in this case, we want to just get a count. And when we're counting records out of our database, keep in mind what's going on here. The report is showing us just rows out of our contact table. Now, Crystal needs to count each row is one row. Now I know I'm belaboring the point but this brings up a really uh, important item here. When I insert a summary and I want to count something I have to count based upon a column, based upon a database field and when I'm counting records I really need to understand what I should tell Crystal to count. So let's see how it behaves. If I tell it to count the company And I hit OK, and what I get is a group footer. I'm gonna, uh, and, the, and, the, and what the footer does is that will now break or group my report by company. So what I'm seeing here, and it's kind of hard to see, I like to make my group headers just a little bigger, a little meaner. So what you see here is Crystal has inserted this summary right here within the, the group footer. We want a, a grand total, right? So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take this guy and we're going to copy it down to our report footer. And now if I go all the way to the bottom of the report, well, it's still breaking on company, my mistake. Let's go back to insert summary. And here we go. We're going to insert a count, and we're going to insert a count of company, and we want a grand total field. Apparently, that grand total field checkbox does not become available until you're grouping a report for whatever silly reason that might be. And I don't want a maximum. Let me delete that so I don't get confused. You'll see how it inserted a maximum by default. That's not what I want, so I want to go to change my summary operation, and I want to count. So it's not doing what we expect it to do. What I want to show you guys is that when I'm counting a crystal record, I always want to make sure that I'm counting a unique 
feel. In this case, company is not unique. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go back to insert summary. And I'm going to insert account. Now, this is where you really have to know the back end of your database. You have to know, in this case, how Goldmine uh, is storing its records. Uh, in your case, it might be something different. So what I, what I really want to get at is the unique identifier. Every database, every good database has a unique column, whether it be cost num or customer number or whatever. There's going to be some sort of column there that tracks a unique value and that's what we're after. So I'm going to count in Goldbytes case it's actually called the rec ID. And when we're counting we want to make sure that we most likely want to use a distinct count. Uh, now here's where again knowing the back end of your database is really going to become important because as a gold mine consultant I know that my rec ID is unique for every record so whether I use a count or a distinct count doesn't really matter however if you have identifiers on the back end that are repeated for certain records you're going to want to make sure to just know the distinction between a count and a distinct count a, di a distinct count will give you uh, crystal will count one for every distinct different in this case rec ID Oh, and I screwed that up. I didn't insert my grand total like I should have. So let's go back here. The nice thing about crystal summaries is that they're so easy to insert. I go to insert summary. And I want to pick my field first. Again, got to find that unique identifier. And I want to count it. Actually, I want a distinct count. And I want a grand total. Not sure why that's not working. Let me do this. I gotta be honest with you guys, ever since we started recording these webinars, I've been having all sorts of problems happening during my presentation, so uh, I do profusely apologize. Um, inserting the summary is actually a pretty easy thing to do. You'll, you'll notice as before when we had our group inserted, we, we were grouping on company, it was an easy deal to insert our summary based upon that group. And again, all I'm really trying to show you here is that there is a, a slight difference between using the distinct count and the count itself. Now, we're going to leave this for just a moment. We're going to revisit this whole counting fiasco here uh, near the end of the presentation. We just kind of want to set us up for that. I just wanted some totals working for us right now. So again, now the, the report is structured with a group. Uh, as a matter of course, I always like to make my group names a little bigger. Kind of gives the report an outline e look. Okay. So let's plug in some selection criteria so we can see how to view that on the report. Well, the first thing I see here is this create on date just bugs the heck out of me because it's showing a time precision. But the time is the same for every every record because Goldmine is not storing a time precision. You guys probably run to this as well. So just to get that uh, out of my uh, irritated field of vision here, I'm going to format that field. I'm going to right click and go to format field. Oops. And I want to change the format of that date to just a date like that. Okay, that feels better. All right, so let's plug in some selection criteria. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, for this 11 record report, let's just uh, imagine we just want New York records. So what I want to show you, I'm going to go down to my select expert. And in this case, I'm going to select my state. And I want my state to be equal to New York. Easy enough. We all know how to do that. Refresh my data. And there we go. Just New York records. What I want to show you is that once you start plugging in selection criteria in a report and specifically if you start 
using multiple parameters like if you're prompting the end user for a state let's do that so uh, let's say that the report shouldn't always just blindly select New York we should allow the end user to select the state they want to see so we're going to go back to our select expert and we're going to delete this part of the selection criteria and okay now we get a full report again great so okay let's make a parameter for the state so let's go to our parameter fields in our field explorer we right click we select new and we're going to create a very very simple parameter we're just going to call it state now the name here is is what the the parameter field is going to be called in crystal and within the designer the prompting text is what the end user sees And the value type when using parameters is, is, of course, very, very important. In this case, we can leave it the default as a string, which just means a string of text. Other popular items here are things like date and number. We're going to leave this as a string, and we're just going to say, okay, we don't worry too much about providing them a pick list because we are assuming that they know the abbreviation of the state they want to report on. So now I have my parameter. I go ahead and refresh my report and absolutely nothing changes huh well I made a parameter it's supposed to prompt me for the state how come it's not working well you guys are probably all laughing at me and of course I know why it's not working because even though I've made a parameter I haven't plugged it into my select expert yet the select expert is still wide open there is no selection criteria so the reports just refreshing itself and giving us a full data set so let's go ahead and plug that parameter into our select expert. So we're going to go to our select expert. And we're going to choose a field. In this case, well, where's my parameter? Well, it's not there. Well, in or, because the select expert has nothing in it, we need to kind of get it going. So we're just going to select a field just to get this. Because what I'm going to recommend is that... Uh, certainly for those of you who are intermediate and above, you already do this. But for those of you who might be beginners... Do not be afraid that when getting into your select expert, go right to the show formula and right to this formula editor because this is, after all, exactly what your selection expert is doing for you. It's creating a crystal formula and you got to become comfortable with these crystal formulas um, because what you're probably going to end up with is, is great big selection criteria that management wants and you need a nice big work area like this big formula editor to kind of flesh it out with. So in this case, we always don't want to keep in mind what we're trying to do with the report. We want the state out of our contact table to be equal to our parameter. So this is easy enough. We add that field by double clicking on it. We want our state to be equal to our parameter. Just that easy. Do yourself a big favor. Click this little X2 guy up here. And that will just check your syntax. Make sure there's no errors. Great.